Hello chaps and chap -heads. here we are today uh, with Kieran from Fully Mill. Today, um, Kieran's actually put my top 10 favourite trout flies together. great things with Fully Mill and, and ourselves at our Vart McLeod is how close we work together. Our clients have a very specific set of requirements for their trips and the great thing is Fully Mill are one of the few companies that, that really tick all the boxes we need both fresh and salt water. Let's count down from number 10 to see what my favourite lists are. At number 10, I couldn't leave this one out of my favourite box. This is in fact uh, one of my own patterns and it really really says everything you need to know about my fly bots is in the fact that evolution is key. There's no point just using the same old flies. We've come up with new ways of tying patterns yeah. so let's utilize them and, and fill our boxes with a set of patterns that really are at the front of the curve and catch us more fish. I invented this fly to represent the mayfly which is our biggest um, upwing fly that hatches over here during its emerging stage yeah. when it's really stuck in the surface film and it's an easy easy meal for any any yeah. trout in the vicinity. It's a great fly in slightly smaller sizes for uh, March Brown, which okay. is yeah. uh, a great hatch in, in Wales and Stony Rivers, but also great hatches in the USA and, and really any big upwing fly that has a, yeah. has a struggling uh, emerging stage. Number nine, for this, it really could have been anything. I've gone with a high-vis poly spinner. And the reason I've done this is you can pretty much guarantee anywhere you go where there's a hatch of upwing flies, what's going to happen is evening comes and the females are going to come back to lay yeah. their eggs on the water. And it can be an infuriating time if you don't have any spinner patterns with you that aren't the right size, colour, anything else, because yeah. when the fish lock into these, there really is no chance of persuading them to take something else. The reason I picked this one uh, is the little orange bit on the top of this fly and the reason for that is we're fishing this in fading light and I need to be able to see it even in those last vestiges of, of daytime. Number eight, um, again with dry flies all of these ten could come up as my top top one but at number eight we have the blue winged olive split wing. The reason this is, is pretty much wherever you go around the world Iceland it's set as the exception, you'll get a hatch of upwing flies. Yeah. And again, uh, when you get hatches of these, usually you get big hatches yeah. and the fish mm -hmm. become locked in. Uh, the great thing with, with this style of fly, very simple green body and the way that the wings split out right. uh, creates a wonderful profile on the water. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and again, uh, it's very easy to get confused between the real things and and, and these pattern. wonderful flies. Yeah. Also the nice thing uh, with how Fulling Mill tie this is it's on a barbless hook and quite a lot of the destinations that we visit promote catch and release and the joy of barbless hooks is that it allows us to release the fish with yeah. minimal effort and, and get them back on their way as quickly as possible. Yeah. Number seven and we've got the CDC Bibio. Um, this is a fly you probably know from our UK reservoirs yeah, quite yeah, well. Yeah, use that one a lot. Um, a variation from the original Bristol style hoppers um, which became famous on lakes such as Blagdon and Chew. With the um, evolution, CDC has been added into this for buoyancy and the reason it's a bibio is it's got these red hot spots in the fly. Uh, and the reason this is in my top 10 selection is where you can go where there's grasslands you tend to find hatches of hawthorn, bibio um, and heather fly. And these, whilst aren't aquatic insects, uh, these terrestrials are really bad flyers and tend to get blown off the grasses and onto the water yeah. where, they, where they become an easy meal for the suspecting trout. Uh, one of the places that this works most effectively for me is Iceland and it's actually accounted for, for several fish over, over six, even seven pounds. Yeah. Um, so fish of a lifetime, this is the fly. Number six, this is a, a great fly and one that I particularly found useful uh, when fishing quick rivers of, um, of Portugal, but since then I've used all over the world. 
and it's a CDC elk sage. And the reason I find it so successful is whilst it's a small fly, you'll see straddly CDC um, feathers there and the elk on the top of the fly. And part of the reason, in these fast waters, the trout will attack this quite aggressively. Yeah. Big splashy risers, and if I picked a just a normal elk hair sage, what you tend to find is the trout hit it but push the fly away from you, um, and therefore you don't hook them up. Yeah. But by having a softer CDC, uh, what I tend to find is they hit it hard, but that CDC crumples, and it allows you to have a better hookup, and therefore. This fly is the sedge pattern to use, particularly in fast water, but it's delicate enough to use on flat surfaces yeah. as well. So we're getting down to the crunch point now, the top five, and where better to start than this big hunk of foam, the Chernobyl ant. If any of you have not used the Chernobyl ant, you are missing out. Foam, rubber, more foam, more foam, and a big hook. What more could you want? And the trout think that too. Probably not my most effective pattern in the UK. Yeah. But traveling internationally, this pattern should be in your box. It's just one of those ones where you can throw it at the banks, you can cast it around structure. Uh, if you want, you can even tease it across the current yeah. and get those rubber legs really kicking yeah. and the trout will come and chase that down. This is a great fly if you're in, in the US or places where there are big stonefly hatches. Sometimes they'll take it as a grasshopper imitation, a cricket um, and other big terrestrials like that. So make sure that's in your traveling trout fly box. Uh, number four, we've gone from big to completely the opposite, the Griffiths gnat. I promise you I'm actually holding a fly here. So this one is a size 18. And again, it's a fly that can just save you from that day when yeah. you think you might not catch anything. And those trout are infuriatingly just pushing at the surface and you don't know what they're eating. Nine times out of ten, they're probably taking small midgets. And this pattern, really, really simple. Little bit of flash and then a uh, genetic grizzle hackle to give you that nice consistent um, hackled body. Yeah. And it just sits there looking like a cluster of midgets. And again, the trout will take it with such confidence uh, that it's a great fly. Again, on a barbless hook, which is perfect for, for just sliding them back. So here we are. Number three, the stimulator. Uh, the reason why I love this pattern so much, A, it's buoyant, it floats high, which is good for a top 10 dry fly, yeah. really. Um, you can see it in fast water, slow water, um, downstream, upstream, it's a visible dry fly and the trout can see it as well. Uh, it's a great representation for us, it can be a, it can be a mayfly, more in rainy weather than, than in still weather, uh, but take it around the world and this can be a stonefly, a cicada, yeah. a salmon fly, a grasshopper, uh, it really can be any fly you want, it, it's a generic pattern uh, you can use it as an indicator fly uh, or as a standalone and you will find that the fish will hone in on that and really eat it down. I've had some great memories with this fly in particular in New Zealand uh, where I'm fairly sure I lost my biggest trout that I've ever hooked yeah. and it was just a small smutting rise on the other bank until the whole river turned brown when it ate this thing. <laughs> uh, needless to say, um, didn't land it. Oh, but was that a fully, fully metal fly? Uh, it was a fully metal fly. <laughs> uh, sadly, it was the tippet that went, so I can't blame you guys. <laughs> I'll just have to take it back and have another go. Right, now down at the real crunch point, and this was a really hard decision to pick between one and two uh, in my top ten. And sadly, the one that lost out on top spot, but very closely pipped it, is the Twinkling Gulper. And the reason that made it in uh, is not because my dad invented it. It's purely for how effective it is. It's probably my second most used dry fly in the season. And the reasons for that, some of you might claim that it looks a lot like a parachute Adams, uh, but look a little bit closer. And you've got this high vis post, uh, which makes it great in all lights. So early morning, dingy light, late evening light, 
it's, it's great, but even in the bright of the day, it's not an imposing color that causes fish mm -hmm. to spook. And then we go to the back of the hook and we've got these long spinner tails. Actually during the day, a lot of fish ignore the fact and we'll take that as a done pattern. Uh, but in the evening, uh, they'll still take this as a spinner yeah. pattern. Grey in body colour. Uh, you'll see a lot of generic trout flies will be grey in, in body colour. This can, for the trout, can be taken as a green fly, a brown fly, a grey fly, a red fly. Um, so it really is a, a good generic colour that will work all season long. Number one, uh, we had to get there eventually. And the fly I've picked is the black CDC. Doesn't look like much, um, but this fly will save you on those days when nothing else will work. It can be any anything. It can be a little midge, it can be an upwind dry fly, it can be a beetle, it can be an ant. It really is all things to all trout. And fish it in slow water, fast water, for smutting fish. Uh, this fly has really earned its title as, as my number one dry fly and I would use it in a variety of sizes from really small um, to really big. Uh, it's a fly that should take up a, a big proportion of your fly box. If you'd like to win Alex's top 10 dry flies, simply leave a comment below, like and share our page, and we'll choose a winner in, in a week's time. Thank you, Kieran. That's great. We look forward to bringing you more videos next week. If you'd like to see more content like this, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Are we recording? Yes. Definitely? Yes.